Some say you can be the French in the kitchen, but with the shifting sense of the time, the old makes way for the new. From molecular gastronomy to sustainable kitchens, in this video we are looking for an answer. Can all-time French cuisine still be that good? Welcome to Hong Kong, one of the most unique cities in the world. It's made up of 263 islands, but all the action is concentrated in three places. First, the Kowloon Peninsula. It's one of the most densely populated places in the world and Hong Kong's biggest residential area. Then there is Hong Kong Island, home to the financial district with the iconic skyscrapers and the historic Victoria Park. Finally, the biggest island, Lantau. Here you will find Hong Kong Disney as well as the giant Buddha. Officially, the city is called Hong Kong SAR or Special Administrative Region. Technically, it's Chinese, but in this area they have separate legal systems from the rest of the country. They have their own currency, their own passport, and much of the official business here is done in English. How did that happen? Basically, China and Britain had a rift. In 1898, China agreed to lease Hong Kong to Britain for 99 years. In that time, Hong Kong grew into a major trading port and economic hub for Asia. In 1997, it was handed back under a one country, two systems principle. Full of both natural and man-made beauty, Hong Kong is a tourist hotspot. In 2019, over 56 million people came to visit. For that reason, hotels are everywhere, and there is no shortage of high-end options, including the Four Seasons. This hotel is massive. It's a 45-story building with almost 400 rooms, including 54 luxury suites. In the restaurant department, they score big, with three Michelin-starred restaurants on the one roof. One of them is our restaurant for today, Caprice. I head to the sixth floor and bump into Victor Patio straight away, the director of Caprice. Just the man I want to see. He gives me a table overlooking Victoria Harbour and a lovely welcome drink from a small batch producer in France. The interior here is a mix of antiques from France and China, as well as custom pieces designed for this space. It's stunning and almost as beautiful as this view. I am a big fan of open kitchens and here it's all on display. 25 chefs are buzzing around in organized chaos. It looks amazing. You're welcome to your place. Let me introduce you here with our beautiful menu. I am here today for lunch and I have three options. The set lunch, the signature menu and the connoisseur. I go for the signature for 350 euro. It kicks off with a bread service. Made from scratch, of course. I will take a sesame roll and a mini baguette. The wine list is magnifique and spans most of the old and new world. The wine pairing with lunch is four glasses and goes for just over 100 euro. And I go with that. The first wine in the pairing is a Pinot Gris from Biodynamic Swiss producer Plus 177. More and more, Switzerland is becoming a player in the wine industry. That might not be the first thing that comes to mind, but when you see it on the map, it totally makes sense. This is probably the first time I try a Swiss wine. Our first course is a chef's signature dish, Alaskan King Crab, jelly mixed with fennel cream and Ossetra caviar from Caviari, with a bit of gold to jazz it up. Salty, a tiny bit sweet, and there is just enough acid to balance it out. Gold or no gold, it's hard to go wrong with a signature dish. And of course, the chef nailed it. Speaking of the chef, who is he? That would be Guillaume Gallio. When he was 12, he was already cooking for himself because he didn't like the food at the school canteen. Inspired by Dukas and Robuchon, he decided to become a chef. He started by volunteering at local restaurants offering to peel vegetables. In return, he just wanted to watch the magic in the kitchen. After culinary school came a big jump, working for twin chefs Jacques and Laurent Pourcel at the Michelin-starred Jardin de Saint in Montpellier. By the age of 23, he had seen the world from Europe to the Caribbean and started his journey in Asia. In 2012, he got an opportunity in Macau. He took over a steakhouse and rebuilt it into a fine dining restaurant. It was called the Tasting Room. It took just seven months to get the first star here. In three years, they had two. In 2013, Winston Theory, the head chef of Caprice, resigned. Caprice approached him with the opportunity, but it was a no from Gallio. Four years later, things had changed, and Gallio accepted the position. With an ambitious and competitive attitude, he set himself a goal. In just two years, Capri earned the ultimate accolade. Three Michelin stars. I am in the best hands possible. 
I capitalize on the wine list and order a special bottle. Krug Grand Cuvée 161. It's a blend of 434 wines from 12 different years, with the youngest from 2005 and the oldest from 1990. Once it's bottled, it stays in the Krug wine cellar for 7 years. Now that this one has been in the bottle for more than 10 years, it's perfect. This channel is like fine wine, it gets better with age. Hit subscribe so you don't miss a drop. Our next wine is a 2017 Chardonnay from Domaine Vallat. Notice the red seal on the label. It's French for old wines and speaks to the quality of the grape. Grape wines don't last forever. As they age, their output decreases, but the quality gets better. Just like us, the oldest wines still used in wine production are around 150 years old, in Australia's Barossa Valley. What's in there? We will know in a second, but the thing next to it gives it away. It's called a truffle shaver. Our next course is langoustin, seared in butter with mushroom and mint in a signature yellow wine sauce. And of course topped with lots and lots of precious white Piedmont truffle. The langoustin is just right and this sauce is so good I could drink it straight from a glass. A rare Madeira wine is next. It's from 1875 but still has loads of life in it. How can a wine that old still be good? A combination of quality, process and storage. And of course a big amount of sugar and acid helps a lot. Winemaking on the Portuguese islands of Madeira dates back to the end of the 15th century. Before heading to the New World or East Indies, this was a common place for ships to stock up on supplies. One of them was wine, but not just any wine. This was fortified with grape spirits, and for good reason. First, it kept the wine from spoiling over the long voyages. Second, it boosted the alcohol, so the ships didn't have to store as much. Later, they discovered the heat and the movement of the ship gave the wine a unique flavor. The sailors loved it, and by the end of the 17th century, so did everybody else. This Madeira is a Malvasia, so it's sweeter, but just as nice. The server tells me this is the pear special for the next course. Believe it or not, this is French onion soup. Both hot and cold. Hot soup, cold ice cream. One ball. My taste buds go wild. It reminds me of comfort food, but it's not. It's fine-tuned to the max, but the soul is still in there. With the Madeira, it really comes alive. Amazing dish. The server says this next one is a showstopper. Mashed potato and caviar, surrounded with the chef's signature champagne sauce. He tells us this is our one-way ticket to heaven. Interesting choice of words. I have heard this before. At another classic French restaurant with three Michelin stars. Inside another Four Seasons Hotel. Can you guess where? That's right, La Sang. The server tells us this is our one-way ticket to heaven. And these two gentlemen came straight from there. Every person I met who trained at Hotel George V in Paris has been out professional with elegance, movement and sophistication. Without exception. It's more than a hotel, it's an educational institute, in my opinion. Some might not care about the little details, but I really admire them. Take for example how they dress. White dress people, nice accessories here and there, and bespoke shoes which colors were inspired by Chateau de Camp. Turns out, it was true. This is heaven. The pairing of potatoes and caviar is a classic, but it's the sauce that made me swoon. The ingredients are simple, but they find balance in the champagne sauce without overpowering the caviar. I also enjoy the simplicity of the potato. I'm not sure if they can top this. To go with this course, we enjoy a nice wine from the island of Corsica. This one is a 2019 Vermentino from Domaine Davacelli. It has bright minerality and gentle spiciness that works well with the creaminess in this heavenly dish. I had a chance to visit the attached Capris bar and it has an amazing atmosphere. Just like the restaurant, they are serious in what they do. The cocktail menu changes every three months to represent the season's best ingredients. Next is wild-caught sea bass in a light seafood consomme with ginger and coriander. Such beautiful presentation. The wine is a 2011 Riesling from the Alsace region of France. Together they make a nice light pair. With the main course coming, I am served a glass of Chateau Dicam, one of the biggest wines in the world. But this is a lush dessert wine, so why is it served with our main course? Often a wine is chosen to complement a certain dish. Here they flipped the script. Our server explains that the chef created this duck dish to play with Chateau de Cam, and he changes the dish according to the vintage of the wine. This one is from 1987. 
The duck comes all the way from France and is prepared using a French tactic which keeps in the blood so the meat stays fresh and juicy. Before carving we take a look. It's served with baby carrots, saffron and fresh mandarin. It comes with a duck sauce dressed up with a special honey from the Sultan region. More wine arrives while well suited to duck. This one is a 2021 Chambon Musini Pinot Noir. The meat is succulent and tender and the vegetables keep it fresh and balanced. This is as perfect as it can be. Before dessert, another rich and warming dessert wine. At this point I'm full and so is my table. Look at all this wine, but we aren't done. Next is a classic French cheese service. From creamy and extra creamy, to strong and stinky and everything in between. With dried apricots and walnuts to refresh the palate. Looks delicious, but it's just too much for me. The pastry team here at Capri's is made up of seven people. So you know they are serious about sweets. Let's see if I can squeeze some in. Here it is. Six layers of sweet indulgence. I love chocolate, so I make a little room for this one. I love how they kept this cocoa sorbet with a bit of gold leaf luxury. Amazing dessert. As we are getting ready to go, we have a guest at our table. Chef Gallio himself. I always like a good chat with people like him. He is in good humor, but you can tell he is serious about what he does. With today's lunch, he has proved it. A true professional. As the 34s come, we know the end of our meal is really here. Another home run from the pastry team. These look more like ornaments than food. The bill arrives and my wallet becomes lighter to the tune of 1400 euros. So, can all time French restaurants still be that good? From the service side, absolutely. This was serious, precise and fantastic service that you rarely see. You can tell the local people were also trained on professional French hospitality. They have created a perfect system. Many try, but only a few really can. And those who can will always have a place in gastronomy. In my opinion, a classic, elegant French restaurant will never go out of fashion. And Chef Gallio just confirmed it. And that does it for this episode. Thank you for joining me. If you like this video, hit subscribe. See you next time.